you will find people in this dunya who deny the existence of Allah. You will find people who deny the existence of the angels, who deny the existence of Jannah and Jahannam, heaven and hell. You will find people who even go to the extent of denying the prophethood of the great prophets. But my brothers, that one person you will never find who denies the fact of death that every single one of us will one day die. Worship your Lord, worship Allah until the certainty, until Yaqeen comes to you. The Mufassireen, the experts in the field of the Quran are unanimous that here by the word Yaqeen, certainty, Allah refers to death. So worship your Lord until death comes to you. And as technology advances, as medicine advances, there are people out there who are making efforts to attain everlasting youth. A man by the name of Alexander Bogdanov, who was a Russian scientist, philosopher and physician, he, come up, he came up with a unique type of experiment. He invented a special kind of blood transfusion. And what he would do is that he would take the blood of youngsters and his blood and he would transfer their blood into his body and his bo blood into their bodies. And through this he wanted to achieve everlasting youth. He wanted to avoid death. But the result at the end was that he died after he took the blood of a student suffering from malaria. Death is that certainty. No matter what you do, the law of Allah is kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut. Every soul must taste death. The angel of death, my brothers, don't be mistaken. He is not bothered how powerful you are. The angel of death is not bothered if you've got a kingdom. The angel of death will not be scared of you if you're an oppressor, if you're a zalim. He's not bothered. The angel of death is not bothered if you're a rich person, if you've got power. He's not bothered if you've got money. But the angel of death is not bothered who you are. He is not bothered where you are. He is not bothered what you're doing. At your appointed time, you will find him in front of you there to take out your soul and my friends you will die at the appointed time every single person has been given an appointed time a fixed term they will stay in this dunya when your time comes at that time not a minute earlier not a minute later exactly at that time the angel of death will be there to take your soul only Allah knows when you're going to die. Nobody besides Allah. You know, just recently we had that, we had that thing going around 12, 12, 12. You know, unfortunately, many Muslims also fell into the trap about the significance of 12, 12, 12. So this must have got into the head of one person, literally got into his head. You know, a man by the name of Krishna Pal, this is a true incident, I'm telling you, I'm not making it up. Krishna Pal from India, north of India, Uttar Pradesh. So he decided that he is going to challenge Allah. And he is decided that he is going to die on the 12th of, uh, of the 12th month, December, at 12 noon exactly. So what does he do? He writes a 12 page note. And in that note, he explained his reason. He said, Who is Allah? Who is God? You know, to determine when I will die. I will die with my own choice. I will die when I want to die. Who is Allah? And then he decided to die exactly at this time. 12th of December at 12 noon. He wrote this note. And what he did was, is you know back home we have, right on the top of the houses we have water tanks. So he made his preparation from early morning. He got bricks and stones and sticks ready and he went up onto the water tank and he put them there safely 
and then he took the 12 page note with him and he climbed on top of this water tank now the people who saw him you know the whole town got together the whole village got together the police found out that came to the scene also and they asked him you know why are you doing this thing so he sent you know the 12 page note he threw it down and in there he clearly said that I want to die at the time I want to die at the time I determine not Allah I'm living my own life who is God to determine when I die you know I live my life with my choice I do what I want to do in life who is Allah who is God and I want to die at this time so the people were pressurizing him to come down so some people actually tried to go up to the water tank to save this person and what you would do is start beating them with sticks and you start throwing bricks and stones at them so they wouldn't get anywhere near him exactly he planned to die 12 12 12 12th of December 12 noon at that time but look what Allah planned the police are pressurizing him the local people the community they're pressurizing him and he fell into the pressure and instead of 12 noon he jumped from there at 11 a.m and he jumped 80 feet and he was finished he died so my brothers only Allah knows when you're gonna die you can do whatever you want you can do whatever you want you can make whatever plans you want to make but only Allah knows when you're gonna die and you will die at that time no matter what happens and no matter what you do at the time of Suleiman alayhi salatu wasalam there was a man and he was sitting in the court of Suleiman alayhi salatu wasalam another man came in another man came in and this man was none other than the angel of death in human form so the angel of death came into the court of Suleiman alayhi salatu wasalam and he started staring and continuously gazing at this young man sitting next to Suleiman alayhi salatu wasalam now obviously if somebody is gazing at you and continuously staring at you you're going to be scared you're going to think what the hell is this guy's problem and this is what he was thinking he was absolutely frightened to death this guy so after a little while the angel of death left and this young man asked Suleiman alayhi salatu wasalam that who was that guy you know he was looking at me you know like he's never seen another human in his life he's staring at me Suleiman alayhi salatu wasalam informed him that that was the angel of death this person becomes more frightened for his life he says oh Suleiman he was the way he was looking at me he is definitely thinking about taking my soul so oh Suleiman you do some Suleiman alayhi salatu wasalam says to him well what do you want me to do you know if your times come your times come what can I do about it so he says to him oh Suleiman you have power over the winds order these winds to take me to India now look where Suleiman alayhi salatu wasalam is and look where India is look how far it is you know Jerusalem is sitting there and he's ordering him take me to India so Suleiman alayhi salatu wasalam he did a favor upon him he ordered the winds and the winds carry this man to India as soon as he lands in India what does he find the angel of death is there in front of him and he takes out his sword at a later time when the angel of death came to Suleiman alayhi salatu wasalam Suleiman asked him that you know why were you continuously gazing at this man why were you standing him down so the angel of death said that you know Allah ordered me to take his soul and when I came to your court I was wondering that Allah ordered me to take his soul in India and he's sitting here next to you how is he gonna get to India how is he gonna get to India why is he sitting with you but this man voluntarily made his way to India and I was there waiting to take out his soul. Allah. Allah knows where you will die, my friend. Only Allah knows. Say to them, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa that this death that you flee from will grab you. This death that you run away from, this death that you flee from, you try to escape from, فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ It will grab you. And then you will return to Allah, the knower of the unseen and the seen. And he will then inform you what you got up to in the dunya. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, the great prophet of Allah once asked the angel of death, that you have taken the souls of millions of people. 
Has there ever been a time while taking the souls of these people? Have you ever felt remorse for anyone? Have you ever felt pity on anyone? So the angel of death says, yes, I remember one time that a woman, a pregnant woman, was traveling by a ship. And while she was giving birth, at that time Allah ordered me that you have to take her soul. So when I went to take her soul, I took out her soul, she gave birth to this beautiful baby boy. And I extracted her soul at that time after she delivered this boy, baby boy. And I asked Allah, that, oh Allah, what about this boy? The ship is now sinking. The ship began to sink because of the weather. It's stormy night. The ship is sinking. She's given birth to this beautiful baby boy. Oh Allah, I've taken the soul of the mother. What do you want me to do with this boy? Allah says that take a plank from the wreckage, put him on there safely, and then I will look after him. So the angel of death wondered to himself. He says to Ibrahim wasalam, that I kept wondering. That how is this baby going to survive? But look at Allah. Look at the nizam, the system of Allah. That when he saves someone, look how he saves them. This baby is on this plank. And it's a stormy night. He's being washed away. And Alhamdulillah, when he comes to the shore, there are people waiting there. And people actually rescue this baby boy. This baby becomes, after a while, he becomes a young boy. Then he becomes a teenager. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endows him with power. Allah gives him knowledge. Allah even gives him a kingdom. He becomes a king. And he is known by the name of Shaddad. But this kingdom and this power got to his head. He became a disobedient of Allah. He violated the commandments of Allah. To such an extent that he claimed that I am God. So one day he said to his people. That worship me, do sajda in front of me. I am God, I am Allah. So they said to him, but Shaddad, look. You're a king, we respect you. We honor you, we cherish you. But that's about it. You know, God, you're going out of line here. So he says, well, what's the difference between me and God? They said to him, Shaddad, look. Allah is the being who gives life and death. Allah is the one who has created Jannah and Jahannam. So Shaddad says, so what? Life and death? I'll show you, I give life, I give death as well. So he told his gods that go and bring a group of people. You know, innocent people. People from the community. And this group of people are both before Shaddad. And then he makes two groups out of them. He says to his gods, kill the first group. So the first group goes, uh, the gods go and kill the first group. And then he says to the people, look, I give death. Then he says to his gods that go and kill the second group. So when the gods go to the second group and they are just about to kill them, Shaddad says stop. Shaddad says to the people, look, I give life. Then they say to him, look Shaddad, Allah has made a Jannah and Jahannam. Where's your Jannah and Jahannam? So this is the time that Shaddad started to build a Jannah on this earth. He gathered the best architects in the world at the time, the best builders at the time, the most expensive bricks, the most expensive equipment he could get his hands off, this man got it. And it took years, it took years. And these architects, these builders actually made something resembling a Jannah. They made such a beautiful garden, so many fruits in this garden, beautiful women, Trees, Allahu Akbar, such beautiful trees they made that the flowers, when it, the wind would blow, from the flowers, the smell, the fragrance of uh, uh, musk and umber would emanate from these flowers. Such a beautiful Jannah. He made a Jannah on earth. Now come the day of the opening ceremony. Shaddad is the special guest. It's his Jannah. He's eager to see his Jannah and show the people that, look, I have made a Jannah as well. And he was challenging Allah. So he gets onto his horse. He is going to this Jannah on this opening ceremony. When he got to his Jannah, and when he was 
just about to come off his horse. He put one step off his horse and one step he took inside his Jannah. At that time, the angel of death was there waiting for him. One step inside, one step outside. The, he asked him, who are you? He says, I'm the angel of death. And I have been ordered by Allah to take out your soul at this time, right now, at this minute. And the angel of death extracts his soul, takes his soul out. And then later Allah informed the angel of death. That, oh angel of death, this is that same very boy who you saved. You took out his mother's soul, but you saved him. This is that same boy whose soul you have taken out today. My brother's death is in Allah's hands. Only Allah knows when you're going to die. You know, at the time of death, there was one brother, his whole life, what did he do? He was an alcoholic. He would drink day and night with his friends. When his time of death came, listen to this carefully. When the time of his death came, his family were all around him. And they were saying to him, Beta, recite La ilaha illallah. Say the kalima la ilaha illallah. And what is he saying? He is saying, give me a vodka, you have one also. At the time of his death. And with these words, he leaves his body. Another brother, hooked on to music, day and night, 50 cent, Snoop Dogg, in his car, you know, blasting this music, in his home, blasting this music, 24-7. Nothing else to do. At the time of his death, my brothers, true incident, sad but true, Muslim, youngster. At the time of his death, family is saying, recite La ilaha illallah. And he is singing songs of 50 cent and Snoop Dogg. And this is how he leaves this world. My brothers, you will die at your appointed time. But the choice is yours. If you lived a life of good, if you lived a life of obedience to Allah, if you were an obedient Muslim, you performed your salah, you didn't violate the commandments of Allah, then the Messenger of Allah وسلم, says that at the time of death, when the angel of death comes to him, Allahu Akbar. An angel of death, you know who the angel of death is? Ibrahim والسلام, asked him once. He asked him, O oh, angel of death, show me the appearance that you undertake at the time of taking the soul of a good person, of an obedient person. So Ibrahim Ali says, so the angel of death, he takes this form. And Sayyidina Ibrahim Ali wasalam, what does he find in front of him? He finds a beautiful, handsome young man in front of him. More beautiful than him he has never seen in his own life. Dressed all in white. A beautiful fragrance, beautiful musk was emanating from his body. A fragrance that Ibrahim والسلام, had never smelled before. Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, said to the angel of death, that if at the time of death, there was no other joy, no other blessing for a good soul, then your appearance, this appearance that you have shown me, would suffice, would be sufficient. Then Ibrahim والسلام, requests him, the O angel of death, Show me the appearance that you undertake at the time of taking a bad soul. He says to him, Oh Ibrahim, you will not be able to bear it. You will not be able to see it. Ibrahim والسلام, insisted. Angel of death says to him, Turn away, turn your face away. He turns his face away. The angel of death then tells him to look. When Ibrahim والسلام, looked in front of him, what does he find? He finds a pit black giant standing in front of him with long hair all dressed in black pitch black giant standing in front of him his feet were on the earth and his head was in the sky and an unbearable stench was emanating from his body and fire was blazing out of his ears and from his nostrils the hair on his body were like men and fire was blazing out of the nostrils and out of the ears of these men. When Ibrahim والسلام, sees this scene, he fainted. After some time when he became conscious, he said to the angel of death, 
that if at the time of death there is no other punishment for a sinner then seeing you in this state alone would be sufficient for him this is the angel of death if you were a good soul in this dunya if you lived a life of obedience if you corrected your lives make a resolution today that inshallah we will repent to allah we will correct our lives we will come on to the way of deen inshallah if you come on to the way of deen and if you are a favorite of allah if you are a good soul then at the time of death my brothers the angel of death will honor you and as soon as he comes to this soul what does he say he says oh friend of allah allah gives his salam to you allah Allah gives his salam to you subhanallah 